Welcome to Radio Free HPC. This is where we talk about supercomputing, high performance computing, and other technology topics. I'm your Toastmaster, Rich Bruckner from Inside HPC, with my co hosts, Dan Olds from Gabriel Consulting and Henry Newman from Instrumental. Now let's get to the show. All right. Well, hey, we, we, we talked a little bit about ISC 12, but a lot else happened besides top 500 at that show. Dan, what were some of the highlights for you? What, what, what did you come away with this year? Oh, let's see. I did a lot of wandering around, uh, talking to various vendors, uh, a few clients, things like that. One of the things that I want to pump that I did quite a bit on is the student cluster competition. It's the first time that they did it at ISC. And real quick, what this is, is they have uh, university-sponsored teams of undergraduates that have to design and build their own cluster. They get the hardware from vendors, but they're in charge of putting it together, figuring out what OS they want. They know some of the applications are going to have to run. Uh, Then they pull the teams together and right there on the show floor they run through their codes and their benchmarks and compete against each other for it uh for the crown and dan your the video uh report you did of that was i thought it was most excellent i did a bunch of them which i hope you like them all i like them all Dan. <laughs> nice thank you was using new software, and I think it turned out well, but it's a really cool competition. Uh, There's going to be another one at SC, and what I would like to see is that the ISC and the SC competitions culminate in a world champion every six months. So the winner of SC gets a buy into the ISC tournament. The winner of the ISC tournament gets a buy into the SC tournament. And uh, we can crown some winners. And actually, at, at ISC, it was interesting. Uh, China, as a country, uh, pretty much uh, took, uh, they, well, they took the Linpack crown, but they took the overall crown, too. Uh, two different teams. Uh, but they all had their own little contest in China, didn't they? I mean, just to qualify as a team to go to Germany. They they had something like what what well, it was 100? it was incredible that well first of all one of the things that that I've I've been covering the SC thing and this is all sort of hobby stuff for me but for the last two three years and I've written a couple of articles in the Register trying to taunt more teams from from Europe into entering for the universities that do it they really enjoy it they get a lot out of it and it really probably the most important thing is that these kids get jobs. These kids get careers out of doing this. Uh, It's almost like a job fair the last couple of days of the show as vendors and uh, government agencies and others start cruising by these booths and picking up resumes from these kids. But I'd like to see more participation. Last year in Seattle, China, mainland China, sent a team for the first time, the National University of Defense Technology, the guys that had Tian E. the supercomputer that was on the top of the list. They sent a team, and they came damn close to winning. They lost out to uh, Taiwan just by a hair's breadth. But Mm -hmm. this launched the whole country of China into some sort of student cluster mania. They had 300 universities express interest in the two slots they had in the Hamburg competition. They winnowed those down to about 30 who submitted full applications and specifications. They winnowed that down to six teams competing for two slots that they brought to Beijing to compete live over four days, which is longer than the actual competition. They were running the the same codes, and they were covered by uh, Chinese national TV, by the news. So the teams that ended up going to Hamburg were extremely well-prepared and serious about it, and it showed. So they had some pretty milestone numbers, did they not, on the Limpac especially? Yeah, offhand, first of all, going back to 2010, that was the first time anybody, we had three teams that barely broke uh, Teraflop, like, you know, 1.0 something uh, Teraflops, three teams that get, did that. In 2011 in Seattle, we had uh, most of the teams get up uh, past a teraflop. In Hamburg, well, almost all the teams got past one, one and a half teraflops with a couple of teams getting uh, two teraflops and one hitting, I think, 2.63 teraflops. And this is on 13 amps. So, Dan, well, Dan when are you going to add the, the, the big problem in HPC that people are facing, going to add a big I.O. problem to the uh, 
the cluster challenge. That's not a bad idea. If you've got some ideas along those lines, let me know. I've gotten in with the organizers, and they're looking at what to do right now. And I, we should talk sometime, Dan. I have a great an idea. I think it would be right up your alley. Okay, excellent. Well, you know, I, I Dan, I, that it is remarkable that they're able to do that much with that much power and something they're cobbling together in a short time. Of uh, just looking at my little history book here, ASCII Red was the first supercomputer uh, in the world to reach a teraflop. Uh, looks like uh, December nineteen ninety six. So that was probably a, a multi-hundred million dollar kind of system. And these probably sucking, I'm guessing, um, maybe 10 megawatts or more. No, I don't think and ASCII Red was doing 10 meg. 10, not, not, not that much, but uh, certainly a lot doing, of power. It was doing a lot more power, power than what Dan's talking about. <laughs> more, yeah. more than a, yeah. a couple you know. of hair dryers or a couple of coffee makers. <laughs> So, uh, you know, um, it's really it's really fun to watch that grow. And, uh, Dan, you've been a great advocate. That's it for this edition of Radio Free HPC. Thank you for listening, and be sure to check back often for new episodes. Also, check out our website for more content, links, and a place for you to let us know what you think about the show. We're at RadioFreeHPC.com. Thanks again. We'll be back with another exciting episode real soon.